Proverbs in chapter 10, I want us to focus this morning on verses 22 through 25. I absolutely love the, the general truths that are presented here. There's just most applicable principles that Solomon's going to bring to light. And let, let's talk about them briefly together this morning. Proverbs chapter 10, begin reading with me at verse 22. It is the blessing of the Lord that makes rich, and he adds no sorrow to it. Doing wickedness is like sport to a fool, and so is wisdom to a man of understanding. What the wicked fears will come upon him, but the desire of the righteous will be granted. When the whirlwind passes, the wicked is no more, but the righteous has an everlasting foundation. You know, brethren, all of our blessings, they come from the Lord. The person that understands that, the person that is grateful for these blessings, the good godly steward of these blessings, that, that understands that, that all uh, things not only originate with God, but ultimately belong to God, that, that person has the proper perspective towards the riches that God is blessing one of them with. And when one has that perspective, the sorrow that, that often accompanies the, the rich of this world, the paranoia, the greed, the selfishness, from what I see among much of the rich of the world, oftentimes just miserable people. But for the God-blessed or rich person who sees these blessings through the proper godly perspective, there's no sorrow added by God. And brethren, that's a wonderful blessing. Solomon describes the fool in verse 23, and certainly we've all seen this, doing wicked is like a sport to them. Sin and, and wickedness to the fool is their entertainment. There's no blushing. There's no feelings of shame or guilt. It's no big deal to them. It's like a sport. But appreciate that perspective is foolish, as Solomon says here. But on the other hand, the latter part of verse 23, a man of understanding um, that gets his purpose, that understands why he is here, that understands that God's way is best. He gets his joy from doing the right thing. He's wise. Uh, verse 24 speaks to, to this path principle that, that we've been highlighting throughout this series. Uh, I truly believe, and I, I think Solomon speaks to this, you know, at their core, the wicked knows things are not right. At their core, with eternity in their hearts, they know I believe that there's a day of accountability for all of us that, that is coming. And, and there's an element of fear, not, not godly fear, but worldly fear that, that fills them. And, and these fears of what's coming, ultimately, uh, they are going to come. And ultimately, they're going to give an account for, for their foolishness in this life. But on the other hand, those who are right with God, those who put their trust in God, those who rely on and live with godly wisdom, they too feel with optimism filled with hope. They, they realize their ultimate desire of heaven, um, their ultimate reward. And then verse 25, it, it, you read it again, it says, when the world wind passes, the wicked is no more, but the righteous have an everlasting foundation. I, I notated in my Bible here the word stability. You know, brethren, only the righteous have true stability. Now, the world wind here represents trouble, instability, danger. And the truth is trouble comes for all of us in this life. When they come, the wicked has no, no solid foundation. I'm reminded of Jesus' illustration there in Matthew 7, at verse 24, starting. We sing the song with the kids, the choice of building on the rock or, or building on the sand. And, and in the ultimate sense, the wicked, they won't be able to stand in judgment as they built their foundation on the fleeting things of this world that, that ultimately are going to be burned up and destroyed. But what a blessing it is to have stability in storms, to have perspective of joy and peace that that aren't dependent upon the ever-changing circumstances and happenings of this world, to know that, that all will be made right, to know that everything is going to be okay, to know that everything is going to get better, very much better as we're with the Lord for all eternity. Brethren, the wicked, they don't have that, not because it's not available to them. They just choose the temporal things over eternal things. And we're back to this. Every path has a destination. God's way is better. Let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, Father, we come to you this morning with grateful hearts, Father. We're so thankful for, for prayers that have been answered on our behalf, Father. We pray that, that we'll never allow the, uh, these blessings to, uh, to go unnoticed in our life, Father, but we will thank you for them. Father, we're so thankful this morning for, for Sister Barbara and the successful surgery that, that she had. We pray, Father, that you'll continue to bless her, that she'll be with Mike as he cares for her in the coming days. And, that her hospital stay will be, will be short and she'll be back among us very quickly, Father. We're thankful for answered prayers on behalf of our brother Howard, Father, as, as all of his tests came back. Good, Father, we pray that, that that will continue. Your will will be done, Father. Father, we're mindful of those who have lost loved ones. We pray for the Weedman family, the loss of 
from Betty's father's wife. Father, pray that you'd be with Betty and Jeff as they care for her father and if they care for, uh, for her mother as well. Father, be with them. Father, we ask you to continue to be with Jenny, Chris, Donald Jr. Bless this good family, Father, as they continue to, to struggle with the loss of our good brother, Father. Bless them with peace and understanding. Father, we ask you to be with us today that that we would be blessed with opportunities to do good, to show others you. Father, just be with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.